Okay, so welcome to today's Bring webinar on automated dispatch, the state of the art and best practices. After a brief, brief introduction, we're going to dive right into the content. Throughout this webinar, please feel free to submit your questions. At the end of the webinar, we will take a few minutes and answer as many questions as possible. If we don't get to your question, we'll email you individually. And if you prefer, you can always contact us via the website to submit the demo form, and we'd be happy to follow up one-on-one -on -one and discuss this with you further. Okay, so before we really get into the content here, I just want to give you a brief overview on Bring. We are the leading delivery logistics management platform. For the enterprise, founded in 2013, our modular platform it powers delivery logistics for many of the world's largest businesses. As you can see on the map, we do this around the world in over 55 countries. These are a few of our clients. As you can see, we really are focused on the large enterprise market. To learn more about Bring and how we are helping businesses better measure, understand, optimize, and scale your delivery logistics, please feel free to contact us through the website or visit bring.com. Hi, I'm Yael, and I'm a product manager here at Bring. I work with a number of enterprise businesses to help them scale and optimize their delivery logistics across over a dozen countries. And I'm John. I work with our internal delivery logistics gurus, the experts here at Bring, such as Yael, to share our experience and best practices across our clients and our prospects. So let's get the show on the road. Delivery and logistics are complicated, and this is nothing new to those of you that are in this space. Um, there are a lot of considerations, and we're going to take a look at what some of those are. At the same time, manual dispatch is fairly limited. You know, human beings can only take into account so many considerations and so much information at one time. At the same time, you have limited business resources, and delivery resources are typically expensive and hard to scale. At the same time, for those businesses that focus more on delivery, on that last mile customer experience or on customer service or customer services, success is mission critical to your business. So it's really important that you get delivery operations and dispatch right. So speaking with the businesses around the world, it's amazing how many are still relying on pen and, and paper to manage deliveries. So just recently, we had a logistic company told us that their system are so complicated that it takes them to train their dispatchers for around, in average, like six months. So six months to train a dispatcher means really slow to scale, okay? And at the same time, pen and paper dispatch means it's really hard to measure, manage, and optimize your operations once they leave in the warehouse and in the field. So there's a lot of moving pieces. Your business needs to get the right item to the right people or business at the right time using the right driver or vehicle for the right price to the customer, merchant, uh, or delivery company in order to improve bottom line business performance. And that bottom line business performance is really important. When we think about what that means, that really means the ROI of every dollar that you invest. With this many considerations and moving pieces, it's really hard to get this right at scale. And when we're talking about businesses doing thousands of deliveries a day, that, that, um, that lack of organization, that lack of automation can really start to hurt your business. Now, there are many different delivery models, and it's important to remember that one size does not fit all. I mean, we could be talking about even on-demand delivery versus planned deliveries, or companies that are delivering using internal fleets, 3PLs, crowdsourcing, maybe using different solutions in different regions. And often businesses are using multiple solutions in tandem using that hybrid model. Or even when they reach peak capacity using their internal resources, they then have spillover resources via outsourced providers. Managing and measuring all of those pieces is really complex. And again, there is no one silver bullet that's going to fit every business's needs. So this is one of the biggest differences our clients see when upgrading to Brink. So we work with each business to understand their needs and implement the right models um, from our platform to meet their exact needs. And although we have a lot of um, uh, a lot of features and a lot of, a lot of capabilities in our system, it doesn't mean that we need to implement most all of them. We need to find the right solution to the right problem 
and make sure that this brings the value to their to their customers and to their business. So we all love automation and these big, bright and shiny tech words. Um, and while automation is often the ideal or an, an ideal way to scale, the more you try to customize your dispatch logic and the considerations that you look at, the harder it gets to start building algorithms from scratch or to start training um, additional dispatchers. It's really hard to scale when you try to add additional variables or additional signals into your automated dispatch or your dispatch solutions. So this doesn't mean that automated dispatching is impossible. We set up optimized automated dispatches for use enterprises all the time. But when we are talking about the best way to automate your dispatch, we look for the platform that can adapt your needs rather than a pre-built product you will quickly outgrow. Really good insight. So automated dispatch has really be, has really come a long way. I mean, it looking looking back on this industry over the last few years, the amount of progress has been really amazing. So how's that? Um, that's a great question. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so automated dispatch solutions. Um, I do, today in the state of the art, we're talking about solutions that are platforms, which are modular platforms, and they're heavily integrated. And let's just take a minute and look at what that means. Integrated means that it fits into the solutions you already have. And remember, because they're modular, you don't need to change your platform or change everything that you're doing. You can adopt the right modules, the right capabilities to fit your business needs, your tech stack, the hardware you've invested in, et cetera. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. That also means that they're open and flexible. Okay, open as in you can build on them, you can add your own capabilities. They're integrated, they're connected with other providers in the space, so you can measure your outsourced um, providers through the system. And they're flexible in that you can easily, because they're modular, add new modules, evolve and grow with these auto dispatch platforms. So for example, a huge US, US chain of cafe was recently expanding their deliveries into a few ge geography when they did not want to hire additional drivers. So in just a few minutes, they were able to add a regional RDS, restaurant delivery service, with, a, with everything fully integrated and seamless data transfer. So similarly, in South America, a larger food chain started offering delivery via white label service where the drivers offer their branded delivery experience. They also collect orders and deliver food throughout aggregators. And all of this dispatch is fully automated and all managed from a central platform. So we're gonna walk you through those scenarios individually, but the important piece here is to think about the flexibility and the elasticity that we're looking at when we start talking about modular and integrated platforms. You're able to easily add new partners and easily add new flows and capabilities as your needs and as the markets evolve. So confidence is a really important measure of the scale and the um, kind of the strength of an automated dispatch solution. However, if your team doesn't trust the that the solution is going to work as advertised, then they're going to keep turning it off or trying to find ways to work around it. So there, there are two sides for building confidence. First, look at how you build trust. Provide your teams with the visibility and transparency. Train them on how does the system work and show them what is actually works. Similarly, share reports on how much more effective your teams are now than they, dis they had been in the past while they were not automated. We are seeing remarkable results, by the way, um, with many teams reporting over 80% faster delivery thanks to um, being the automated uh, part. And that's, that's a great point here. When, we can sh when you can share that KPI with your team, they're going to believe in your solution, they're going to trust it, and they're going to run with it. And, and also, when they're trained and they know what to expect and how to, um, and how to work with the app and with the system, they feel confident that they know what they're doing and how they do it. So the other side to building confidence is exception handling. So often dispatcher or support teams are skeptical of automated solution and try to turn them off by bypassing them when they need an explicit delivery or a corner 
and error. So to prevent these scenarios, integrate exception handling into your automated dispatch tool, make it a lot of um, valuable for them. So if you train your, your stuff on how to change the priorities of a task or rush a delivery, it doesn't become a problem that it's a corner that they cannot reach to. Okay, so as we said, dispatch logic has gotten really good. So, you know, in an ideal world, you're going to want to ultimately, not necessarily on day one, but over time, add every consideration or test multiple considerations into your automated dispatch algorithm so that you can get to that optimal place where you're meeting your customer expectations and you're most efficiently optimizing all of the resources that you have available. So often businesses think that adding too much data will confuse or overwhelm the dispatcher. But with automated dispatch, you want to share every signal that you can. This doesn't mean that every possible signal needs to be integrated before you can trust going live, but an automated solution should be limited to just two or three considerations. And to be clear, there's no limit to how many considerations you can put in. Start with the basics and then grow. Um, so we spoke for a bit before about hardware and how many companies have already invested a lot of money in hardware. So what we, what, with the new state-of-the-art systems, they're cloud-based. And what that means is they integrate with your existing hardware, with those apps that you may have already developed, and they work seamlessly together. At the same time, if you haven't invested in that dispatch and delivery hardware yet, that's not a problem. You always have the ability to you know, pretty easily buy some relatively inexpensive mobile phones or have people use their own phones, driver apps, and everything can be managed through the basic hardware that you can buy or things that your drivers already have. Now that we've discussed the state of the art, Yael is gonna walk us through a few examples of how large enterprise businesses are using the Bring platform and the auto dispatch automation capabilities to scale their business. So in the auto parts business, just to introduce this, speed is of the essence. When an out of stock garage needs a piece, they have a car sitting there on the lift or a vehicle sitting on a lift, that's just draining money while they wait for the new part to come. So the first parts provide, auto parts provider to bring them, that missing part is typically going to be the one that gets their business. So in, in that auto parts, scenario, we use the phased rollout approach that allows businesses to start their pre-scale rollout very quickly, learn, adapt, and then scale the delivery very easily. So the first stage of this rollout was quite simple. The order is sent to the nearest store, and the driver dedicated to that store delivers the part to the out-of-the-stock garage. To improve the driver efficiency, deliveries were batched so that drivers could make multiple deliveries in a, in a single run. The next phase was to incorporate fulfillment centers. Sometimes these regional warehouses were closer to the garage than the local store. Other times they simply had more inventory on hand. So shortly after expanding to fulfillment center, this auto parts retail began testing driver pulling. With driver pulling, a fleet of drivers are shared across multiple dispatch locations. Now, when, when an order comes in, <coughs> The platform can automatically optimize to make sure that the orders are being sent from the right location with the right driver, introducing additional complexity, but also operational efficiency. Okay, so this is a great example of where you have the blend of automation and their own operations working together. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, there was this phased approach that allowed them to go live relatively quickly and then start scaling. So how did they, what did they learn during their early stages that allowed them to scale and grow? So what they actually wanted is to be able to batch their deliveries to improve their driver efficiency. So drivers don't have to go back and forth and back and forth for a separate part, um, as well as being able to optimize the route. So though they saw a huge uptick in orders from garages further from their retail store, some garages closest to the retail location complained that their deliveries were delayed a bit. So as part of their pre-scale process, we tweaked the automated dispatch logic to better serve both nearby garage and those further away. So again, as you start with auto dispatch, what we see here is they didn't need everything perfect on day one. They started with something relatively simple, learned, 
applied those insights, and then we're able to scale. And by the way, this is a great example of one of those merchants, one of those businesses that saw because of this new flow, an 80% improval, imp improvement in their delivery time. And they're looking at 20 minutes on average saved in terms of their delivery time. And those stores that were slightly further away that weren't satisfied with the delivery they used to be getting are now driving four times more business to this auto parts retailer. So it's a really great example. So we're moving to uh, a different use case where a global carrier um, had a very different flow. Um, they, they have orders coming up from different, um, different customers and all of these orders were synced over to Brink. We then located the right warehouse to the or retail store where the order should be processed. So a number of parameters informed the logic that dispatcher delivery. So either return or pickup or whatever they had to do, either using their own track or crowdsourcing. So now what was interesting here is, and for this specific case, they were often delivering coffee capsules, okay? So there were certain regions where this carrier didn't have strong enough coverage to offer a cost-effective and timely solution for that for this global carrier. In this case, using the Bring platform, they actually were able to send out a fleet that would go to the border of that geographic region where they didn't have strong coverage, and they would do a back-to-back -back transfer of inventory over to a regional 3PL. Now using their, the Bring apps, the drivers were simply able to scan the inventory to maintain, maintain chain of custody. Their end customers, those destinations, the businesses and the consumers ultimately enjoyed the same tracking experience and the same delivery experience as if it was a centralized platform, but they gained that elasticity and flexibility using that regional 3PL. So actually the, the company that we're using um, were very, the importance of customer facing and customer experience were very important for them. And they had their customer calling to their support center saying, hey, we now have much more visibility of where the um, delivery is. And they were very happy with it. They were then leveraging on asking how modular can we be in implementing this ordering into their app uh, while maintaining this flexibility in their app as well as customer experience although they were actually using the external fleet to do the delivery. Okay, now the last scenario here, as we know, is often people aren't home or nobody answers the door or you're arriving and the business happens to be on a trip that day. So in order to repeat those second and third delivery attempts, save money and lower their fees to customers, they also set up that fallback delivery flow where if somebody wasn't home, it could, the items could be left at a secondary location, at a locker, at a local retail store, and then the customer business would come and pick up. In this case, it was often coffee capsules, but there are, you know, this was actually used to cost dozens of clients where they could go pick up their items from that local store as needed. Again, this is another flexibility of the system, being able to find an, a different scenarios or a different solution depending on different customers and availability. So either they come to you or we put it on a locker or a store, uh, depending on the customer needs, efficiency, and the modularity of the system. Now, this one is Yael's baby, so I'm going to let her fly solo. <laughs> Thanks. So this is a food chain that operates thousands of locations. Uh, we'll take a look on how their automated dispatch worked across one continent. Um, they received orders from full service companies, those that collect orders and deliver them. They also accept orders throughout aggregators that collect and order, but do not deliver, as well as through their own mobile app, website, or call center. So all of these orders are aggregated in Bring, rather than using a pile of mobile tablets to collect these orders. So we did a direct integration into their point of sale system so that all orders are going straight to the staff in the store. They're using uh, a Bring tablet that actually has all of the, aggregates all of the orders from all of these um, aggregator or full service providers and provide the store one focal point for all of these orders. Now, when, when they first started, uh, they wanted each restaurant to manually accept the order because they were not used to doing deliveries and they want to make sure that the restaurant are up to date or are familiar with what's going to happen. However, as they grew, 
to trust the automated system, they have since enabled the automated order acceptance, which made the, the flow much more easier and less um, time consuming for the team in the restaurant. In addition to notifying the store, bring notify the correct delivery fleet or driver. So when a driver is three minutes away from the restaurant, the order are sent to the kitchen for preparation. You can also see here that with all of these um, systems fully integrated, all orders cancellations flow are fully automated. So if the restaurant or more likely the service that placed the order needs to cancel an order or if it's automatically it automatically proceed without needing to manually change a thing so it's all inside the system automated uh, and the restaurant doesn't have to start dealing with cancellation nor the aggregator because it's all integrated and automated and this is also relates to how we talked about exception handling so in this case, each restaurant uses a tablet running Bring Deliveries Preparation Dashboard. All of the orders are grouped, so the drivers know exactly which bags they have to take with them to deliver. So customers receive notification when their order leaves the restaurant and when the delivery arrives. A tracking link allows them to track their deliveries in real time. And after the delivery, we also collect customer rating and feedback. By measuring every step in the process, the fast food chain management can make better decisions about delivery partners and measure operational efficiency. In some regions, the driver collects payments on delivery. Bring automate, automatically adds the payment details to the delivery preparation list so driver can bring exact change or mobile point of sale uh, in order to charge them on site. We also create a return task for the drivers in case they need to bring back the money or the mini uh, point of sale back to the store. So most recently, we also added another um, use case to click and collect. So in this flow, the customer serves as the driver picking up their own delivery. So they have their own app. They create an order to coming to bring, goes to the restaurant. Once it's ready, they can come and pick it up and they get notification once the food is ready. So this is fully automated dispatch management was set up and running just a month and continues to grow in scale and complexity. But it also about the flexibility of the system, being able to integrate with different partners on different use cases, serving one goal for that business chain in order to have everything in one platform. So yeah, Ella's going to say this, so I'm going to brag for her. This entire process meaning from the time that they signed their pre-scale and now it's at scale across over 12 countries and continuing to grow across an entire continent happened in six months because this is software based. It's very agile, it's elastic. And this looks like a relatively complex flow, but because it's modular, we're able to start relatively simply and grow. And by the way, because everything was measured, because everything was digital, they now have the access to those delivery KPIs. They now know which partners are most effective, which have lower reviews, which take longer, and how they can optimize. And one more thing, I think that in this use case, we can also see they gradually um, doing it uh, in scale. So starting in free scales with few restaurants, leveraging to more restaurants, making sure that we are on the, the right track, that operations are working correctly, the drivers and the integration are fully connected, and then we can scale. So now that they're at scale, just a few numbers, I'm gonna brag about Yael's work here. Um, they are at very nearly 100% delivery in under 30 minutes. That's 50% faster than they were in the past, and we're talking about massive scale with thousands of deliveries. So we're gonna transition now from looking at what this looks like in action and very quickly go through some best practices. Special thank you to our pre-scale customer success and global product teams for all of your amazing insights. I know we spent a lot of time over the last few weeks um, interviewing you, talking about dozens of customers around the world, but your insights were really helpful, so thank you. So as we spoke about in the past, you want to start fast, iterate, and improve. You don't need to wait for perfection. You don't need to worry about the fringe scenarios when you're at one store and you're in pre-scale. And we're gonna talk about this more on the following slides, but just remember, focus on getting out there so you can learn and improve. 
So do define your scope based on your known requirements. Interview your team, know, know your process, know how you work, and what's the minimum thing that you can start with. Don't say what if or I need that and that and look for the future with a very complex flow. Start with the minimum that you can automate in order to make your life easier and then expand in both scale as well as with additional features that can be helpful for you. And as he yeah, said to me earlier today, all of these what if questions or what if we added this, this component are great for testing in small batches once you're at scale. Because once you have that scale, you can isolate a few locations and different delivery models with them and before you roll them out. Don't make your pilot dependent on all of your what ifs. Now, when it comes to automation, as we said before, it's not all or nothing. You only use automation where it's going to work for your business. So it can really help with, dis with dispatch, but doesn't need to be all of your dispatch. Automated dispatch does not mean that you're going to do away with all of your dispatchers tomorrow. It means that you're going to augment the tools that you have now and add additional signals and tools so you can do more, better, more efficiently and improve your logistics ROI. This is also relates to the um, all or nothing criteria saying that you can have both. So you can start with manual and then go to automation or start with uh, some parts that are manual and some parts that are automated. And this is also relates to the other flexibility uh, that we're going to talk about choosing um, flexible and modular platform. And this is exactly the next slide. So collect, validate, and integrate. Know what you want to do, learn how you want to do it with your team, try and start automating. Once you automate, you understand what's working, what's not, and you iterate again and again. But once you learn how to do it properly, you are more confident in automated. So Yael shared a story with me um, as we were preparing this slide um, about a large cafe chain. And I mean, we're talking about thousands of cafes that are doing delivery. And as they started looking at their best rated drivers, they found that even when their deliveries were a minute or two late due to inclement weather, whatever the situation was, they were still getting those strong positive reviews. And when they interviewed those drivers, they found that there were a few things that they were doing that differentiated them. For example, um, if they saw that their orders were running a bit late, they grabbed a couple of extra cookies from the cafe, wrote a personal note, apologizing, saying, you know, rainy day, whatever it is, with a little smiley face. It was very personal, and the customers loved them for it. Their tips that were measured actually were often higher as well. Now that this business, this cafe chain, identified what was positive driver behavior, they were they learned from it and they were able to automate that so that the kitchen knew to make a pile of cookies available, particularly on rainy days when there were political events in town or something happening, that their deliveries may be a day or two late. So plan for change. When you're adopting an enterprise platform, we all know that your needs are going to evolve. As I will explain, the economics are going to evolve. The technologies will evolve. Make sure that you're ready to continue investing. and You want a platform that's going to help you evolve and innovate over time. I'll take this one. Um, outsource smarter. The reality is today that as businesses look towards elastic solutions, as they look to expand beyond their current limitations of their own staff, their own resources, their own brains and use more technology, that often means outsourcing. But just because you outsource part of your delivery or your delivery itself to another service doesn't mean that your business should sacrifice, it should grow. So as you're outsourcing, think about how you can maintain your branding and that customer relationship. How do you maintain visibility over the delivery experience? And how do you maintain control by being able to add or change partners and keep that flexibility? So the economics of delivery are very dynamic. Crowdsource is often a great solution for some businesses, such as bulky delivery in rural areas, particularly businesses with crowdsourcing. You don't have to pay for the trip uh, or for the retailer to go to the to warehouse or the round trip. So regulation is in some area may take outsourced um, delivery particularly attractive. So when you're selecting a delivery logistic platform, look for an open and integrated platform that will provide the flexibility and elastically expand 
or change your delivery providers to take advantage of changing geographical and economics. So we spoke about the um, flexibility and about the modularity, and that's exactly where economics come. So again, you want that flexibility. You want to be able. You want to be able to work the pieces to change, to add modules, to add and remove partners dynamically as needed. It will also give you leverage when you have scale in your negotiations with these partners. And part of this really involves benchmarking your delivery. Understand what works. You know, we all know it's an old business truism that you can't change or you can't improve or you can't measure. It's also true that you can't measure something you haven't been measuring. You can't improve something you haven't measured until now. So with these cloud-based automated delivery solutions and dispatch solutions, you should be able to measure everything. The reason you want to be able to measure everything, however, is not just to optimize and find those new efficiencies, but it's to be able to put your delivery and logistics um, story into context. When you go back to your board or your senior leadership, your steering committee, especially as you're getting started, it's very important that you're able to forecast your ROI and to tell your ROI story, to present those KPIs and to show that this is not a loss leader for the business, but a revenue generator and strategic to the business in the long run. So cut your learnings curve. So we mentioned that the delivery and logistic landscape is constantly, constantly evolving. So this often makes the learning curve for mastering logistic quite daunting. So you can accelerate your impact by learning from peers, partners, and vendors. Many have established best practices, tested new models, and learned what will and what will not work. While no two businesses are exactly alike, you can learn quite a bit from others in an industry who have already been down this road. And since we have been uh, running this road for quite a long and our experience with a lot of customers with different segments, uh, we also have the knowledge and the experience to help you to learn how to do it properly. And though, you know, my sales team may not like it when I say this, Yael is a very nice person. So as you're listening to this, if you're not tuning into this live today, or if you have a question that you think about later, fill out the demo form on the website, reach out to us. Yael is always happy to help people. Um, and share from her amazing knowledge and experience. I'm going to let her take this next one because this is one of her favorite points. <laughs> it is. Asana Champion. So this one is really one of my favorites, and I truly believe in that. So one of the biggest differentiators between programs that overperform and those that are under, under deliver is leadership. So a general committee is great, but at the end of the day, someone needs to be looking at the big picture, plan the rollout accordingly, and make sure that all the moving pieces are in place and are not moving anymore. So appoint your champion and empower them. Work closely together with your customers and the business um, partner that you choose. Make sure that they know your needs and go hand in hand and be able to do the change that you want to do. Um, and I have to tell you, this is one of those areas that really relates to um, cutting that learning curve, working quickly, and where that dedication from a team that knows what they're doing that's been there makes a huge difference. So please, whether you're working with Bring or you've selected another provider, and even if you're not working with us, we are here to help. You can call and we'll talk, you know, we're always happy to have a conversation, but cut that learning curve, find your champion, measure what works, use a scaled approach, and remember, we're not reinventing the wheel, and though this is complicated, it's not rocket science. There are proven methodologies that will get you to market faster, and we're talking weeks, not years. So use those lessons learned, use the industry, use us, and be strategic about what you're going to do. Um, we are short on time, we're actually a few minutes over, so I'm only gonna take two questions. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you take these. So we talked a bunch about ROI today. Um, somebody just asked, let me read this. How do you measure the ROI of delivery or automation? So that's a great question. So as we said, every element of delivery should be measurable. At Bring, our team work closely with each of our clients to understand their business objectives and define the right set of KPIs for their business needs. So of course, this will evolve with time. And 
it's fine to have a KPI at the beginning of the road and then change it as you grow, automate and scale. But if you'd like to learn, to learn more about it and how we set these KPIs or how we're doing the processes and how we sit with our customers to define these, um, you're welcome to shoot me an email at yael at bring.com. I'll be happy to help additionally. So that's Y-E-A-L at bring.com or even easier, just fill out the demo form and we're happy to connect you. All right, one more question, because um, we're short on time. Um, this is a good one. So, you know, we spoke about, I'm gonna paraphrase this. We spoke a bunch about modularity and flexibility. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what do you mean by modularity and how does this make me more flexible? Right, so that's another great question. And we've uh, been through this uh, throughout this webinar. And I think that we see a lot of products and it's like, think of a product that is like a hammer. You can hammer it in a nail and remove the nail. But if you have a screw that needs to be screwed in, you need to buy an, a different tool. So that's why we differentiate between um, a platform and a product like a tool and a toolbox. So a model of platform is actually like a toolbox. You can add or remove components that you need. And at Brink, we do offer a platform for delivery and logistics so businesses can grow, scale, and innovate using the platform modules. So we do have a, a lot of features and we have a lot of capabilities, but we do need to make sure that we fit the right um, components to the right business to meet their needs and perform these values for them. That's a great answer. I love that analogy about a tool being like a product and a toolbox being like a platform. Because you know, there's a difference between when somebody's hungry, giving them a fish and teaching them to fish. And I feel like instead of telling them, go to the lake, here's a reel, we're explaining to them how to collect food, how to shop and how to cook. So it's, it's a really great analogy. Thank you, Yael, for sharing all of these amazing insights. And thank you to everyone that joined us today for your time. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure to be here and speak about um, the great platform and the automated um, processes that we're doing here. So if you, thank you. If you guys want to learn more about anything we discussed in this webinar, or to learn more about delivery in general, please visit bring.com. We have a number of amazing webinars, guides and resources on there. And you know, if you don't feel like watching another webinar or reading, get another white paper on the space, um, feel free to reach out. You can schedule a demo, even if it's just to talk about your needs or to see what's out there in the market. We're always happy to talk to you. So thanks a lot and have a great day. Thank you.